Hey, hey, hey. What a night, huh? Oh, yeah. And it continues tomorrow, the last night of sweeps with Drew Barrymore and controversial talk show host Ken Hamlin. Uh, we have had a, a laugh riot here, and I'm going to change the whole pitch of this program, and I hope you come along with me here. It was two years ago today that uh, tobacco and firearms agents raided the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas. Uh, four ATF agents and six Branch Davidians died in that raid. You see pictures of it here from KWXT television. It set off a 51-day siege that ended in tragedy when the entire compound went up in flames. Uh, Davidian leader David Korish was killed in that fire, as were more than 70 members of his family, his followers. Uh, Bonnie Haldeman is David Korish's mother, and as many of us did, she watched on television the day that that compound burned, and she joins us tonight on this two-year anniversary of the day the siege began. We have had a, a lot of fun here with Don Rickles, and this is a very difficult transition for me, and I hope you, you understand that, okay? And I hope you enjoyed watching Don oh, Rickles. Oh, I did. Okay. He's very funny. Um, before the, the, the tragedy of, of Waco two years ago, how much did you and David talk, if at all, when he was uh, uh, standing off inside the compound? Well, hey, you mean from the raid till April 19th? Right, during the I siege. I never got to talk to David once. The last time I talked to David was um, the night of the 27th. Right. When uh, a friend of mine told me about the newspaper article that the Waco Tribune had published about the sinful Messiah. So I called him. I was getting ready to go to work, and I called him and asked him if he'd seen the paper. And he said, yes, he had. And mm -hmm. he said, they were all all right. And um, he asked me when I was coming to see him, and I said, well, I have to work this weekend, so, you know, as soon as I can. It had sure. been about almost a month since I'd been to see him. And so I said, I got to go. I have to go to work. So I talked to him maybe 30 seconds a minute at the most, and that was the last time I ever got to speak to him. And then during the siege itself, you were not able to speak to him? Not able. I called um, Mr. Kavanaugh, Mr. Sage, different ones of the ATF agents and FBI mm. agents that were at the number one checkpoint right out at Mount Carmel and uh, asked them to let me talk to them. And they said, well, we don't need you. If we need you, we'll call you. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it was, they never let any of the families ever had any contact with anyone during that time. What I was wondering, if you had spoken to him as his mom, might you not have said, uh, David, um, give it up? Uh, I don't think that would have. No. No. No, because David was very firmly believed in what he was doing and in God. And uh, I think, too, that he was a little mad at them bursting into his home and killing the people that they did. And they didn't even have a search warrant when they came out mm -hmm. there. Uh, I don't think anything I could have said would have changed his mind or uh, in the course of the way things went. As the siege was continuing, as you were watching this escalate to the flashpoint, did you think to yourself, if only he'd just come out, if only he'd negotiate his way out? And just, just I believed, I believed eventually he would come out, mm -hmm. as he told Dick DeGaron that as soon as he finished the seven seals, he would come out. And uh, at one point, you know, they said he promised to come out, and then he said God told him to wait. Well, I can understand that because I've seen <clears throat> David do that before, that he was going to do something, and God told him to wait, so he waited. But I firmly believe that he would have come out if they would give him two more weeks. He wrote the first seal. Ruth Riddle came out of the fire with it. And he had six more to write, which they were the easiest ones to do. So within two weeks, him and everyone in there would have come out. They had planned the way they would come out. He had talked to Dick DeGaron about it. They didn't want to die. It was a senseless of killing. Not. Of course They not. shouldn't have died. Just there was a lawsuit filed today on behalf of yourself and others. And the, the language of the lawsuit, and I've not read it, uh, but the language would indicate that the claim here is that there was a deliberate move by the government and that the government knew full, full well that there would, would be casualties, but they didn't care. I and, believe and that. You believe that I be believe true. that. They practiced for like two months at Fort Hood to go before they even went up there that day of February 28th. Now, why would they practice for two months to, to serve a search warrant for something they never even proved that he had that was illegal. If they would have called Sheriff Harwell and said, hey, we have a search warrant, and he had went out there with them, David would have said, come on in, I'll show you anything I have. Mm -hmm. In fact, he extended that invitation to uh, some ATF agents uh, about a month or so earlier to, um, 
can't remember the name of a couple that had a gun store there in it's Waco. Okay. It's okay. And uh, the man called David and said, they're here, they're asking questions. And David said, tell them to come on out. So he told these agents and they said, uh, don't tell him we're here. Uh, I don't know the whole story, but there's a big cover up. America's been lied to. And would you think that all of the wringing of hands on the part of the president, Bill Clinton, and the attorney general, Janet Reno, after this, this massacre, that that was just stagecraft posturing? Ringing of hands. Well, when, uh, they all, when, 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 when Reno said and Clinton said, we certainly had no intention for this, for this crisis to end this way, for the siege to end this way. I don't believe that. You don't. I don't believe you, that. You, so then in your, in your, in your view, that was, that was after the fact, uh, wringing of hands. Mm -hmm. We are uh, talking here with the mother mm -hmm. of uh, David Karish, uh, Korish, Bonnie Holderman. Uh, we're at 800-95-CBS-TV. I'm very short on time, so I can't promise a lot of phone calls, but we'll do the best we can after these messages. I think cotton looks great on people. Lisa Helmer, Cotton Incorporated. It's nurturing, it's cozy. If you use the wrong detergent, clothes can look older before their time. Clothes are an investment. No matter how many times you wash it, you want it to look and feel good. That's why the cotton experts trust Tide. With regular detergents, repeated washings can make cotton look old. But repeated washings in Tide help keep it looking like new. Wash after wash, our clothes look great. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. The fabric of our life gets a longer life. We gave it a CFC-free air conditioning refrigerant that won't deplete the ozone because we wanted to be thoughtful about the environment. But we also gave it a finish so durable it's warranted against rust through corrosion for six years or 100,000 miles. Because sometimes the environment doesn't return the favor. It's the new Cavalier. It's all you need. And it's genuine Chevrolet. Oh boy. Hey, Cousin Dave, I got a great idea for a new chicken sandwich. Not that one with jelly beans. No, no, no. This one has a Wendy's whole breast filet, a slice of Monterey Jack, and some creamy ranch dressing. Why don't we add bacon and call it a Wendy's Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich? Now you're talking, buddy. <laughs> that sounds delicious. And we brought it back two weeks ago. Come in for a delicious Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. I knew this would taste good. <laughs> Me too. These hands can do anything, including spread germs. Washing them often is good, but it doesn't go far enough. Lysol spray with antibacterial action kills germs on surfaces, so you don't pick them up with your hands, and that helps reduce the spread of colds and infectious diarrhea. Lysol disinfectant spray. Keep your hands off germs. Yummy! My favorite fried dumplings. And soy sauce. That's okay. She uses Advanced Formula Resolve Carpet Cleaner. It even gets out greasy combination stains. From the director of In the Line of Fire. <laughs> comes the year's most powerful thriller. Dustin Hoffman. This thing kills everything in its path. You gotta tell him to send out an alert. Just do it. Rene Russo. I'm leaving with the team in an hour. Morgan Freeman. Damn it, Sam. I want to save these people same as you. The most optimistic projection for the spread of the virus is this. 48 hours. Outbreak. Rated R. Starts Friday, March 10th at a theater near you. The tax man in Indiana can't wait until March 1st. He knows Tom Reaper of Richmond, Indiana has to pay tax on more motor homes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, truck campers, tent campers, mobile homes, sectional homes, and truck caps than anybody. He's right. Tom Raper always has the biggest selection and the best bottom line deal. Let's help Tom play a trick on the tax man. Why should he have all the fun? Tom Raper wants your family to have the fun instead. I-70 exit 149A, Richmond, Indiana, closed Sunday. Tax sale ends March 1st. We are back with Bonnie Haldeman, who is the mother of David Korish, who died two years ago today in Waco, Texas, at the Holocaust there. You and your family are Seventh-day Adventists, correct? Or, or were? I was raised a Seventh-day Adventist. And I don't claim to be a Seventh-day Adventist. As was David raised as a... Right. As a and when you went to live with him at the compound from 85 to 91, as I understand it, the Seventh-day Adventist church excommunicated you. They, they, right. They, they kicked you out. Actually, uh, I moved, he had already been 
George Roden had already run the group off from Mount Carmel, and they were living in Palestine, Texas. What was it about mm -hmm. David Koresh's methodology that the Seventh-day Adventist Church did not like, do you think? Well, they didn't recognize the whole branch or Shepherd Rod movement back from the 1930s when Victor Hadoff first formed the church because he came with a message, and the Seventh-day Adventists didn't recognize that message. And the message was? I couldn't exactly tell you that, what that's that That's okay. Was. That's okay. But, uh, this is not a court of law here. But no, I, I know. I'm just but, uh, wondering if there was something mm -hmm. in in the theology or the philosophy of David Koresh and the Branch Davidians that the Seventh-day Adventist Church had a fundamental disagreement with. It was something to do in the book of Isaiah. Um, like I say, it, it, they have never recognized them since that, back in the 1930s. So it wasn't just David. It was the rodents and, and all, the, all of them before that. Here is uh, Brian now on the toll-free in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. What do you uh, think, what do you think, Brian? Uh, my question to her was, um, what was the purpose of all those guns? It was a fact that there was actually guns there. What was the purpose of that? There were guns there, and they uh, went to gun shows and bought and sold. Um, it was a business to make money for the association. Uh, the girls had a factory set up. Don't, they don't, don't, don't churches usually sell cookies and chocolate bars and <laughs> Can not Can you guns? make money with chicken cookies and well, chocolate? Well, the Girl Scouts do. They made hunting vests. They had stacks that they sold those at the gun shows. A lot of the guns David had were collector's items. Mm -hmm. They weren't even, you know. Um, but, the, but the ATF and later the federal authorities said that they found an awful lot of firepower. Now, that's what they're saying. I was not inside that compound, and, and, and so I don't know what was in there. Well, on the Ron Engelman show one time, they said that what they call the bunker, which was actually where the walk-in refrigerator was and where all the food was stored, they said that thing had, I don't remember how many millions of rounds of ammunition right. in it. Uh, some mathematician figured it up and said there's no way that could even fit in there. Mm -hmm. And besides, that's where most of the children were found and a lot of the women when, uh, after the fire. Yeah, uh, Brian, my friend from Georgia, what, what is, what is uh, your take on this now, two years after? Well, um, they might have been collector's items at the time, but now um, they actually use them, <laughs> and they kill people with them. That's, that's my whole point. They being? They being the, the, people, the branch divinians. Right, but what about, what about the, uh, the alleged ruse of serving a warrant being used as a, a, pre a pretense to storm the compound? Does that bother you in any way? And, and by the way, if it doesn't, it's okay. Uh, no, it, it doesn't bother me. I'm glad you called, Brian. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, thanks. How religious was David Koresh as a young kid, as a young man? David, from the very first time as a little boy, when uh, my mother began taking him to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, he loved it. And uh, when he was 12, he started listening to the radio preachers and started studying the Bible intensely himself when he was about 19. Um, David's whole life was for, you know, the, the God. Mm -hmm. He had such a rough life and disappointments that he turned to his Heavenly Father. And uh, but, that's but, what keeps me going is, is David's belief in God. Right, but, but you know, some people see God as love and as compassion and as mercy. And others see God as avenging and judgmental and, and final. How, how do you think David saw God? I think he saw him both ways, yeah. you know. Because God says, I create good and I create evil. Right. Um, what did he create in David? There was a lot of goodness in David that the media has not even attempted or wanted to bring out. The, the world just knows David as the media or the authorities presented David. Even the books that were written, they did not try to portray David like he really was. People that knew David loved David. And... Uh, um, I, you know, he was my son, and of course I loved him, and I'm not saying he was perfect, but uh, he didn't deserve to die, nor did Cyrus, Star, Rachel, Bobby, or any of the rest of those people. I appreciate your candor, and I appreciate your being with us tonight on a very difficult day, and I thank, thank you, you ma'am. Thank you Okay, God here. bless you, ma'am, and thanks for coming in. Bonnie Haldeman on the second anniversary of the massacre at Waco and the loss of her son, David Korish, two years ago today. We'll continue and wrap it up for late on Tuesday, early on Wednesday, after these messages. Oh, hi. I'm Dionne Warwick, and I'm here with my very best psychic friend, Linda Georgian. Girl, it was another great show. Oh, it sure was. I couldn't have done it without you. Well, thank you. <laughs> but you know what I've heard, Linda? What? What's that, Dan? I've heard 
but there are still people out there who have not seen the Psychic Friends Network. Oh, you're kidding. You mean they haven't seen Kim Schreiner, who plays Scotty Baldwin on General Hospital, get a reading from a master psychic? Uh, you might have a child within two years. <laughs> Exactly what I'm saying. But then we have had several of our stars call. Mm -hmm. I mean, people like Rip Taylor, mm -hmm. Adam West, Tristan Rogers, Wolfman Jack, Phyllis Diller. We've also heard from many of the over two million people who've called the Psychic Friends Network. I think calling the Psychic Friends Network was really worth it. Um, we're still together, and I have a beautiful baby boy now. I'm, I'm happy. I'm like, I've never been so happy before. That's just because I called the psychic. And just recently, you told me about a new and improved service mm -hmm. just for our callers. It's right. called the Psychic Friends Master Line. That's right, Dan. The Psychic Friends Network has gathered the best psychics from around the country. Not only has the response from the people at home been overwhelming, but from the psychic community as well. We now have the very best psychics anywhere. Each is a master psychic. Well, then what you're saying is that we now have the creme de la creme, the very best of the best psychics. Exactly. And oh. you can speak with a master psychic anytime, day or night, from the privacy of your own home. And as always, Dion, all, all it takes, takes is, is a telephone and an open mind. That's right. <laughs> Must be 18 to call, just $3.99. Man, when you weren't watching here, Steve Coffey went out of here with the chair and almost broke his head open on the set that's falling apart here. I hope we can last six more weeks around here. Me too. I'm not kidding, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> we better stop. Huh? Yes. What's the difference? If they can't take a joke, to hell with them. Tomorrow, Drew Barrymore and Ken Hamlin. Stay tuned now for Elliot Forrest on the Late Late Radio Show. Drive safely on the way home. Sleep tight, North America. And good night, everybody. Later tonight, it's the stuff of novels. An ex-president's brother arrested in an assassination, but it happened in Mexico. Find out what's going on on CBS News Up to the Minute. From Mountie. You want to go undercover. To used car salesman to bust a hot car ring. Please stop immediately. This is not your automobile. Do South Thursday. This is CBS. The Movie Gallery, your one-stop video store with over 10,000 adult videos for sale or rent, has done it again. We've come back from the adult video convention in Las Vegas, Nevada, where we've purchased thousands of adult videos with new, never-seen-before stars, plus hundreds of new amateur adult videos at special prices from distributors who needed cash. Regularly $89, save now, $15.95, yes, $15.95. The Movie Gallery, 3709 North Shadeland and 2707 North Tibbs. Don't miss this. The man in this car has been drinking, and he's in no condition to be driving. The next time you've been drinking, learn a lesson from this guy. Take a cab.